Nuggets. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Newton's Nuggets. It's the podcast. It's the YouTube show. It's the show where you can watch us on the screen. You can listen to us in your ears. You can listen to us on your phone. You can listen on your iPad. You can get your laptop out. You can do it any of those ways. We don't mind. I like that you've told them that, even though they're already consuming the content. <laughs> See, this is your problem, Jesse. You think that I still think about content. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. I don't know why we're here. I don't know how we're still here. <laughs> okay, I'm impressed we're still here. Uh, yeah, well, we we were just talking earlier about how, how on earth is it that we're still going. <laughs> yeah, we, we were just talking about episode numbers, weren't we? And what the bejesus, why? <laughs> <laughs> Episode numbers, download numbers, it's just all a bit ridiculous, really. It is. And then you and sometimes, right, so 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 those of you who don't know, you get to look at a map of the world and you see where your downloads come up by colourful bits across the world. There's colourful bits in countries I don't even know the names of. <laughs> I've got a funny feeling as well looking at that that a number of our listeners like to go to Spain. Yeah, I think we've got people to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I think so. It's like, right, I've got nothing better to do for a week. I'll listen to a few episodes. I reckon there's Spanish people going saying, this Paul doesn't know how to say his name right. <laughs> Paul, what was it that you were saying earlier? The name that people oh, call you? I, yeah, I get called Newman a lot. Newman. Paul Newman. Paul Newman. <laughs> If we go out to Spain and do a talk, that's how we're getting introduced. Newman's Nuggets! <laughs> <laughs> but it is, um, you know, we have gone well over two and a half years now since we've been doing the uh, the, the proper podcast interviewee thing that we do. And real, really, your Newton's Nuggets with you just putting videos on Facebook and all of that. For those of you who don't know the, the backstory, I'm going to listen to some other episodes we talk about it. Um, we, uh, it's, yeah, it's probably three, three and a bit years that you've been yeah. doing that. I do remember when we went, we went crazy and we put up that frame behind me so that we could have a green screen behind me. Ooh. Oh, those are the days. Oh, the height of technology. That was <laughs> what a green bit of card and a picture frame. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. And at Christmas, we put all the de- Christmas decorations around, and then we made like a- I got fire going in the uh, green and, screen. And, and that fateful moment when I said, "Jesse, if you want to ask a question, just ask it for God's sake." <laughs> <laughs> and since then, he hasn't managed to shut me up. Tried. Doesn't work. <laughs> talking of shutting up, I'm going to stop talking now so you can introduce the guest. Oh yeah, good point. That's a show. We've got a guest. Thank you very much. Ladies and gents, today we've got a lovely lady called Rachel. She owns a business called My Freelance Admin. Um, basically, she's got a team of people that come in and they're, they're your PAs for you. But they're a VA because they're virtual. There you go. That was that was pretty good. Right? Yeah. Um, and and seriously, have a listen to Rachel. Her journey, her ideas, what she's doing, how she's grown it from her having a want and a need to run a small business around her own child to a business that's turning into a powerhouse and employing people left, right and centre. I like this story a lot. Um, and, you know, if you, if you need VA services, give her a shout. Fingers crossed we'll get commission out of it and Newton's Nuggets might be able to afford the next electric bill. <laughs> nah. Nah, it's not gonna happen. We're just gonna keep home going on with gaffer tape and string. We do oh. this. Right, so should we go over to the show? Newton's nuggets. Hello everybody and welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Right, today we've got a lovely lady who's come to join us. I haven't met this lady before, but we have had a bit of a chat before we started recording. And I have looked into her business, and I've got to be honest, I'm quite interested in this one. Ladies and gents, I want to introduce you to Rachel Bozanke. How did I do? You did good. You did good. (laughs) (laughs) The worst surname ever. I mean, it's the best surname ever. I love it. But But do you know what? I love, I I do love names that are different and that make you think and make you go, ooh, how'd you do that one? And (laughs) 
And then when I asked you how to pronounce it, you went, you could do this, or you yeah. could do this. There's like 10 different options. <laughs> hey, I'm so screwed. I'm so screwed. <laughs> I Make like sure. Bozen K because it's like, you know, the hyacinth bouquet thing where it's bucket. And like my oh, the way my family pronounces it is Bozanki, which is completely different to how it looks. So Bozen K is a bit more posh and, you know, it, yeah, I like that. <laughs> See, I like Bozen K. I, I've got to be honest. Yeah, and I then, when you say Bazanki, it sounds like something I'd share in a game. Yeah, but... And I'm like, no, no, you are far too nice for that. That doesn't sound right for my <laughs> image of you. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, sorry, everyone. We're now just going to be chatting about Rachel's surname for the yeah, next why not? <laughs> Yeah, So, Rachel, you, you got in touch with us and you told us a bit about your business. You told us a bit about your background. And I don't want to kill it before your introduction of you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert to the question that I first ask everyone, which is, Rachel, who are you? What do you do? And why should people listen to us two having a chat for a half hour or so? Okay, so hello, everyone. I'm Rachel Bozen Kay from My Freelance Admin. And my company provides um, admin support to businesses um, through virtual assistants and skilled freelancers. Um, we work like ad hoc, um, where you can just book us when you need us or regular book a regular VA for however many hours a week. Um, and we have packages too. I'm sure we'll talk more about all of that at some point. But um, yeah, that's what we do. We provide admin support to businesses and we love it, especially I love it. I love the fact that we help businesses. Um, and why should people listen? Well, I hope that they'd be inspired by my story and how I got to where I am today. And I hope it would inspire people to realise that they can do more than they realise and that everything is very transferable, skills are very transferable and... I also hope that by talking about what I do, people will also be inspired to like reach out and get support where they need it. See, this is it. I, we deal with, right. So Jesse and I get a lot of people asking us for advice because we've met so many different people and actually rather than giving advice, unless it's something that's our specialist subject, rather than give advice, we point them to the right person. Mm. And, and I've got to be honest with you, Rachel, I am not a specialist in admin. Right. <laughs> oh my word. no, <laughs> I'm rubbish at it. I hate doing it. I shouldn't be allowed to. I think if Jesse has his way, I'm never going to touch the diary or the calendar or anything to do with accounts ever again. Because <laughs> I shouldn't. Okay? I'm going to break it. I'm going to break something. So when somebody says, I love doing this and I can do this for hours and I help other companies with it, I've got to be honest, I think you're nuts. <laughs> yeah yeah maybe but I, I really I really think that people should always work in their like golden zone or whatever it is you call it yeah. so you should be doing what you do and let us do what we do and even within my company we've got VAs who are great at this who are great at that so everyone's got a golden zone even within the admin bracket there's like people love finance admin people love yeah. Like, you know, and everyone should just do what they're really good at. And, what and that's, like. that's why, um, so, so when Jesse said, right, look at this lady, she's, she's approached us, have a look at the company. And something I liked about your website is you're blatant with uh, the people that you've got on the website. They they say what their favourite subject is and what their favourite mm. thing of doing is and what bits they enjoy about business. Yeah. And I was like, that's quite refreshing. You're not just trying to sell someone to get the hours. You're trying to get the right person into the business to help the business the most. Yeah. I like that. Good. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, have you always been a VA? No. I've got a long story and I can go way back. So uh, You go ahead. I've got a go cup back. of tea. You tell us a story. <laughs> let's go back Woo, reverse so i'm gonna go back to sorry i love that you just did a wibble wobble effect thing it's <laughs> like we're, like we're traveling back in time that was awesome Thanks. yeah i hope you all went there with me <laughs> even if you're just listening on audio you went there yeah there's now um, people with earphones in going they did a wibble wobble thing. a wibble wobble and a wibble what <laughs> well now you have to head over to the youtube to check it out you know <laughs> nice one carry on like yeah. that we'll get on fine Come right on. so going back in time i'm gonna go back gosh i don't even know how many years but um Anyway, I, I, I studied music. So I studied, I uh, did a diploma, high diploma, and then a degree in vocals, professional musicianship, studying, uh, focusing on, on vocals. Um, so I did that. Um, I, the degree was down in Brighton at Brighton Institute of Modern Music. And whilst I was studying that, I started gigging and performing as a singer. Um, one of, actually, my sister's band, um, they're a massive 
bands they still are and I was very lucky that I started gigging with them actually I think when I was like 15 I started gigging with them doing like um I think my first gig was miming keyboards um because someone dropped out and they had it on track so I could just stand and mime and I was like stood there miming along to the the keys and the drummer like tapped me on the hand and was like your hands need to be down that end of the piano (laughs) because I was like all up here but um anyway so that was probably my first like proper gig um but then I did a lot and even when I was doing my degree I was gigging lots I was out probably every weekend doing different events corporate events weddings that kind of thing um so I left my degree I then went and worked in the events office for the band for like two days a week. I taught singing for, I think, another two days a week. I was then out gigging on the weekends. And all at the same time, I was trying to launch myself as a pop star, <laughs> as an artist, as a songwriter. Um, it, and yeah, I basically spent 10 years doing that journey. So um, performing a lot, but also always with this kind of vision of like, I want to be a number one selling artist. Um, I always had in my mind that I'd get to the age of like 28 and I'd sort of let go <laughs> and do something else. And it actually happened quite naturally that I um, got to that age. I released an album. It had done relatively well in Germany, but it was such a drop in the ocean <laughs> that like I was just like, I've worked so hard to get to this point and it's just not enough. And I'd kind of just gone, I'm ready to like move on. But anyway, I'm I'm jumping ahead a bit. My point about that part part of my life, that 10 years, is that I was running myself as a business, as trying to become an artist. So I was um, doing my marketing, setting up my website. Um, Can't remember if we had social media then. (laughs) And we must have done. We had something, I'm sure. But I was doing organizing radio tours, um, doing my own press releases and contacting press, uh, organizing like managing my budgets I was literally running myself as a business and I really feel that I learned a lot of my skills back then um which I use today so that's my one of my main points of today is about having transferable skills you might have skills that you don't even realize that are relevant to your next step in your life completely agree massively yeah. agree with you yeah cool so anyway so I did that like I said for 10 years um and yeah I got to about 28 I think it was and I decided I wanted to get married and I wanted to you know get buy a house and all that stuff and I I also just wanted more of like a a regular life because I was like gigging gigging every weekend and like or sometimes like three or four times a week which would then wipe me out for the rest of the week (laughs) like I'd be exhausted plus teaching plus working in the events office um so I just decided that I'd missed out on too many like social events and that kind of thing missed out on people's weddings and wanted something a bit more nine to five and something for the mortgage you know like my because I was self-employed I had a great income but it was like you couldn't like forecast it and all that stuff and I wanted something a bit more solid for my um mortgage (laughs) so I um then I yeah I basically blagged my way into a PA role for an architecture company in London I sort of just embellished everything (laughs) on my CV and said how I because I'd worked in the events office doing event coordination but it was a really small company and I was kind of doing a bit of everything. So I sort of said that I was PA to the director and stuff. And I kind of was, but that wasn't like my official title. (laughs) Anyway, I blagged my way into this company. And um, what I found was as soon as I started working in that environment, which was completely different to what I'd done previously, I just found I had so many transferable skills. I found I had a different mindset to most people because my mindset was like, if I didn't know how to do something, I'd, work it out or like the printer broke I'd fix it you know because I'd just be like right I'll fix it everyone else would be panicking going oh we've got to call in the IT guys I'd be like hang on a second let's just google it <laughs> you know and and I actually I think when I was in that I, I stayed there for quite a while but in my job title at one point it had something about IT I was like in-house IT um, PA and in-house IT because I knew nothing about IT but I just had the right mindset to like work it out basically um so anyway yeah I worked as this PA I I absolutely loved that role I still love doing that role like looking after someone and helping them basically um I found I was really good at it if I do say so myself (laughs) I was a good PA and I was PA to the MD who was an architect and 
I just loved it. And and basically within that company, I grew into a senior project coordinator because I was sort of so involved in the projects, managing the budgets. It, like a PA is never just a PA. Like people think PA, oh, that means you like take their laundry to the laundrette. It's really not that. <laughs> you are literally like the right hand person of that yeah. person. And you have to kind of almost be them, but not. <laughs> so um, a good, a good a good PA and the person they're working with or for, whichever way you want to look at it, they're an amazing team. Mm. They really are. I've done, back in my corporate days, I remember one time I went into a meeting with a massive company, all my colleagues were saying, oh, you, you'll never get anywhere in there. And I got in and got on so nicely with the PA and helped her with a few things while her boss was running late. And then she said, oh, he's ready for you now, 25 minutes later, or wherever it is. The guys come out and said hello, and the PA just went, it's all right, you don't really need to meet with Paul. We're going to buy what he's selling. <laughs> and he just went, okay, if you say so. And I'm still there going, what just, what just happened? Yeah. And she went, I've seen what you like. I like you. I trust you. We're working with you. Yeah. If I'd been one of those arrogant gits who just, you know, dismissed the PA, mm. we wouldn't have got anywhere. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you have quite a lot of power as a PA, as well, like like that. Yeah, it's amazing, um, and yeah. the amount of trust that that person puts in you. Um, yeah. It was one of his clients actually that said to me that um, something like what I just said, really, that the PA has to be kind of like a clone of the MD. Like you have to be almost as good as that person. I know you're not because you're the PA. But, you know, you need to have like a certain way of working to be able to really do it well. So. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely loved my time there. And I loved how I grew into a project manager, a project coordinator. I managed a small team as well. I, like, I managed the admin team whilst I was there. And yeah, loved it. Um, I, I can't remember how long I was there, but it was a while. And then I decided to move. I, I Oh, I left um, to, I went back to being self-employed again um, because there was a startup I wanted to work for. And like, I was quite excited about the startup kind of business. And um, yeah, I just, again, I found it was like a really small company of like four, I think it was three or four, but um, I just found that I could do a lot to help that business. Like my, I can't remember what my, my title was something like engagement lead or something like random, but um, I just did a bit of everything basically. Um, and uh, loved that and worked there for a while. <laughs> and then September, 2020 came and I went on maternity leave, went and had a baby. So I was self-employed, took 10 months off. And when I came back to work, people were wanting to work. I didn't really know what I was going to do because the startup sort of didn't really need me anymore because, because of COVID and everything. They'd sort of downsized because um, they were events-based. Um, but yeah, I just found coming out of my maternity that um, people were sort of handing me admin work to do. They were like, oh, could you just do this? Could you just do that? And I sort of landed on my feet with about 12 hours a week um, admin work from three different clients of yeah. all three people I knew. And I thought, oh, this is good. I can work this around my family and my little boy. Um, it's really flexible. I don't have to go and travel anywhere. I can do it from home. Um, so, yeah, I set myself up as a VA. And then I worked... Um, like that and I grew and grew and by Christmas I was on 29 hours a week and um I realized that was like my ceiling at the time because I did I think I had two days a week childcare, and then the rest I just worked around naps which was crazy like my baby would go to sleep and I'd be like right da -da -da -da, quick work 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 as soon as he wake up right mum head right let's go and then yeah. it was literally like I think back then he was napping like three times a day and it was just carnage like it was lovely because I got to have great time with him I got to work but it was like full-on you know tw trying to fit 29 hours a week in um it was hard <laughs> so yeah, anyway um basically I realized that there was a great demand with the VA um VA business and yeah. I thought do you know what there's a capacity this you know there's a limit of how much I can do so I thought if I change it into this agency setup it's infinite really because it's like whoever I get in I can just keep growing and growing and growing it's all based on their capacity not not just mine so that's what I did um so from January this year like uh, it's still quite fresh new I started with this agency format and I was very lucky that three of my clients kind of came over to that format 
and needed more of a team rather than just one person. So yeah. we hit the ground running with um, three clients and it's just grown and grown since there. And here I am. <laughs> nice one. Long story. I mean, right. Something that you said there um, about being in the entertainment world and then going into the office world and things that had to be done, you just got them done. Mm. See, I don't know about you, but I swear there's something in us entertainers. Mm-hmm. It's a case of the show goes up at seven. It has yeah. to work. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I can't I can't take an excuse of that bit of kit's fallen over. Therefore, yeah. we have to stop the show and we have to give these hundreds of people their tickets back and tell them that it's not on. It's mm-hmm. just going to work. Okay. We're going to find a way to make it work. Um, and it is it is weird because uh, not Friday, just gone Friday before, I put myself kind of back into that world. I'm I'm used to being booked out by corporates now. I don't worry about the ticket sales. I'm I'm mm-hmm. going to be put in front of a big audience that they've arranged. And stupidly, I agreed to do a one night show where people would buy tickets for it, all based on my name and if they wanted to see me. And oh my word, the stress! I just <laughs> it was just weird. Yeah. Um. And I loved it. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. But I did look around going. I'm so glad I get bought out by corporates these days. So <laughs> <Yeah>. much. <easier. clears throat> but it was also I think I think there is a show a showmanship attitude of it's gonna happen at that time no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and when you take that into an office, it can scare some people. <laughs> um yeah. And then I was thinking about the things I've just loved about what you were saying. Finding the team, getting the right team, getting the people Mm -hmm. that love what they do, getting the people to work in their golden opportunity, thing that they love, and getting Mm -hmm. them doing that. And whilst I said at the start, I think you're nuts for loving admin, okay? (laughs) Once I said that, and you were talking about people working in their golden moments, and and then I was like, yeah, most of the world think that I'm nuts because I like walking on stage and having a microphone and no idea what I'm going to say. Yeah. So, so, (laughs) yeah. If we if we all know the things that we love doing and we're allowed to do those to earn our income, that's awesome, isn't that? That's a great life, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. I mean, well, Jesse, you need to ditch everything else you do and just pick up your camera, mate. That's it. Just you and your kid. I see Jesse's one of the best photographers I've ever seen. He's mm. absolutely amazing at it. And you should just see the big grin that he's got on his face when he's creating something. It's brilliant. Um, and at some point, I'll point you over to his photography stuff later, Rachel. It's amazing. It really awesome. is amazing. <laughs> right. So you've gone from an entertainer, a music <laughs> graduate. You you did you studied music at Brighton, did very well at it by the sounds of it. Out as a solo singer and with bands and doing that for 10 years, yeah. dropping that and going into an office, working as a PA for people and doing quite well at it, even though, in your words, you blagged it to get in there in the first place. Yeah. And when you said, I blagged it to get in there, I thought, true entertainer, carry on. Yeah, yeah we're always blagging it, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, yeah. And when we blag it and get away with it, everyone else goes, well, I wouldn't do that. And there's us <laughs> lot going, why not? Yeah. Why not? That was fun. Carry on. And then <laughs> and then deciding to go self-employed again. Now, the baby thing. Mm. <laughs> that must have been a massive part of the decision. What, to go self-employed? To, to, to recreate yourself in a way that works around him yeah. and you and you'll want to be with him. Yes. Yeah, it was the only reason I did it, really. I did think, well, once I went on maternity leave, I was like, I never want to work full time ever again. Or I never want to, you know, go into that nine to five. Um, I wanted like, I knew I wanted more of a fluid working yeah. uh, life, you know. Um, but yeah, it was totally the reason why I chose to do what I did. Um, yeah. And at the time, I just didn't want to go back to work because I, I know this sounds silly, but because of COVID, don't mean don't want to keep bashing on about COVID because like, everyone does. But I didn't really get like a maternity leave like most people do. Like we couldn't really do no. much. Um, it was like one on one walks around the park, you know. So I felt like I, I just never wanted my maternity leave to end. I was like trying to eke it out for as long as possible. And it's actually only since um, October this year that I've actually gone back to work. I now work four days a week. Um, whereas up until then, I was still trying to juggle. I was doing about three days a week and then the rest around 
where I could yeah. dance evenings, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, totally chose this lifestyle for, for him, really. See, I'm massively with you there because when uh, my daughter's 14 now, when she was born was when we came into the recession of 2008. Um, so things went really weird then. And that was mm. when I decided to leave my last corporate job and just do magic, you know, because a recession is a great time to do that, right? <laughs> um, but I made that decision because beforehand I was working from six in the morning till about 11 in the evening in my corporate job. Mm. And then at the weekends, I was being a magician. Right which is fine when it's just you and the other half and, you know, you're doing it for the money and for the holidays and for the car or whatever. But then you've got this little bundle of person that suddenly wants you around all the time. Mm. Um, and it was actually my wife. She kicked me out the backside and she said, you know, I was going to quit the magic. And she said, don't be an idiot, quit the job. If you quit the job, you can be around five days a week and doing magic two days. I was like, yeah, no, that makes sense. I can do that. So did that for quite a while. Um, started mental theft and and before the pandemic hit. But then Emily was then, you know, 11, 12 when it hit. And when the pandemic started to settle down and the people started to want me out there more, mental theft had started and it already got itself a good name. But I remember my daughter, I went to pick her up from school one day and I'm driving home with her and we're chatting as we do. And when it's just me and her, if my wife had to be somewhere else, when it's just me and Emily, she's she's very blatant with me and she's quite blunt with me. Mm. And she went a bit quiet and she went, Dad, I'm really happy that you're getting work back in and I'm really happy that you're getting magic gigs back in, but does that mean you're not going to be around it every weekend again? Mm. And for me, that was like somebody just slapped me in the face. Because mm. I've always, I've seen it for ages as I work two days a week and have five off. Yeah. Whereas my little girl saw it as you never hear it weekends. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, that, so I remember after that, I, I did. I turned around to Jesse and I said, "Mate, this has to change." Yeah, Men, yeah, we have a we have a way that I could be working in the daytimes in weekdays, doing maybe one or two gigs a week as a mental theft speaker, mm-hmm. and I could be a dad at the weekends. Yeah, and that was kind of it. And I'm being um. I'll be honest with you, Rachel, I'm the the least deaverish person you will ever meet because <laughs> I just can't, just can't. But it's so funny this year, I am stamping my feet a bit more and not taking on the gigs that I don't want to take on. Yeah. Do you know what? I do wonder if that's like a post-COVID thing for a lot of people because a lot of my musician friends have done the same because I still gig, by the way. I still do the corporates. But um, it's the same for me. I'm, I'll only travel an hour and a half now. I'm not going to travel further than that. I'll only do it for a certain a certain price. I'm not going to go, not desperate to just take anything. I'm, I'm not um, arguing on price. I don't see the point. If you want someone cheaper, that's not me. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of my musician friends are the same. You know, they've all, I think, from that break, had to think about what they actually want out of it. And it's not to do every gig under the sun and travel to Scotland every day, you know. I did. I did um, so every so often I will host some festivals. And uh, I'll be blatantly honest with you. Anyone that's in the entertainment world hosting festivals, the money is rubbish. OK, mm. it, it just is. But these festivals are so much fun. Mm. I, I get paid for a day of acting like an idiot and making people laugh and having fun with the audience and the bands and everyone that's involved. Um, and yet, possibly the worst paid gigs I do. Yeah, I do them because I have yeah. a right laugh. Mm. But that's the choice we can make now, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It either needs to fulfil me as an mm-hmm. entertainer um, and my ego and my love of what I do, or it needs to make the bank balance really nice so that me, my wife, and my daughter are okay. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Um, right. So now I want to talk to you about what you actually do as a VA, okay? Because you've given us the backstory and and the, I like your weird way of how you got to be in a business (laughs) owner with people working for you because I might be on a similar journey. That's all I'm saying. But I want to talk about how VAs can help. I did spot earlier when I was doing a little bit of background on you that you've got an ebook that you send out. Yes. Are you right if we talk about three steps to hand over your work? Yes, always. Awesome. 
Right, something I really liked is I looked at your website and there's loads of helpful stuff on there, including your blogs, okay? Mm. There's loads of helpful stuff on there for people who have got small teams or medium-sized teams that are thinking about getting a VA and they're possibly going to hand some stuff over, but they don't quite know what to do. And Mm. I like the fact that you've given them loads of information without trying to sell. Mm. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. I really like that. So if it's okay with you, let's go through that. Let's say, for example, that you've met some dodgy magician entertainer, (laughs) okay, who now seems to have a cybersecurity business and speaking on that and a podcast that he runs with one of his mates, right? Just as an example off the top of my head, what kind of stuff would you come in and help those people with? (laughs) Okay, right. Well, so from the podcast side of things, things we do quite regularly are we can do the editing and we can do the video editing as well and we can get it all uploaded to wherever it is you want to put it. I did um, see one of your guys said that they love video editing. I can't remember her name. Um, um, was it Debbie? I think it was Debbie. She's on the I list. think you could be right. Yes. yes I did remember does. seeing that one and going, that will put Jesse out of work. He, he's oh, gonna yeah. oh, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't talk about the editing bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so yeah for the podcast maybe let's go more the promotional side like we do the social media promotion that kind of side of it so we do social media management and stuff like that too um and then what i really like and what the ebook is about is the way i like to work with business personally so i don't tend to do much of the actual client work now what i do is um, a package we do called setting up for success and that is all about like deep diving into your admin processes now for most people they'd be like I do not care about my admin processes but guess what I do (laughs) I really for me I'm thinking there's a process (laughs) yeah the process is like how you do something you know this I do this then this then this and this and quite often we don't even acknowledge that there is a process um, and we don't even think about it like and the easiest example I can think of is when I do invoicing um, every month I do the I do the invoicing I'm not quite ready to hand that over yet um, to anyone but um, when every time I do it or when I started I'd get there I'd sit down I'd be like how do I do this again because I have to run timesheets match them against the job like check that everything's like what we quoted and stuff um, and so yeah after a couple of months of being a bit confused every time I did it I was like right I'm just going to stop for five minutes and write down every step like that I'm doing So now every time I go to do it, I literally am just following my own instructions and it's like easy, right? So the processes bit is what I really love working on. So I do these sessions with um, clients where we deep dive into the admin processes. They might be just like a one man band or one woman band, um, or they might have a small team or they might be looking to grow their team. Whatever it is, getting those processes in place makes that whole experience of expanding, whether it's now or later, a lot smoother. Um, See, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. So if there's a part of the business that I do that, for example, Jesse knows nothing about, because we both have bits that we each do, especially on the podcast, and the other one doesn't touch it because we know the other one's going to do it. It's all good. But if I wrote down the steps of the process that I did, that would therefore mean that if something happened, he could do it. Yeah. Or you could hand over to a VA or, you know, whoever. So you could then free up your time and you could do something that you want to do that maybe grows the business, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's how it works. Okay, I, w- I was thinking playing Xbox, but, you know, yeah, we can we can pretend <laughs> I'll do so. Oh, yeah, stuff. all having yeah. fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But, um, to link it to the ebook, the ebook is designed for um, business um, owners who are just like too busy to stop and hand over their work. Because I get that a lot with clients. They're like, I really need help. I really need support. I don't even know. I don't have time to even tell you. So it's all linked, really, basically. So the ebook is like taking you through these different, through these different steps the first one is literally make some time which sounds stupid and a bit simple but it is literally like book in half an hour in your diary whether it's like today or a month's time just put that time aside to stop just stop and think (laughs) the second part is like going through an actual exercise of looking at like your day-to-day what you do and then looking at your value so how much do you are you worth per hour you know how much do you value yourself as and then looking at how many hours that task takes you so that's costing you in your time and then you look at 
you know, a VA and how much that would cost to get a VA to do it. And A, they'll do it quicker, I assume, <laughs> because generally if it's like an admin thing, you know, they're going to be quicker. Um, no offense. Um, and B, they'll, you know, it cost, it will cost less than you because you're so valuable within your business. Um, so that's where we look at there. But, you know, and, and then what I go on to talk about in the ebook is these processes and how important it is to get those in place before you even start, really. Um, just as a side note, you don't have to have the process stuff in place. Like you don't have to do that package to work with our company. We have plenty of clients who just book ad hoc or just book a, a regular VA. But yeah. a lot of clients come through that um, through that package first to get. Everything you know what? You're, you're spot on here because um, a, a little while ago I was booked to do a talk that was quite far away from me. Mm. And I was planning on uh, jumping in the car and doing the long drive, getting there, doing the talks, doing you know, staying there a couple of nights, doing a long drive back. And Jesse said, he said, have you checked out the trains? And I went, yeah, they're a bit more expensive. So, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. And he went, yeah, but how much time will you gain? And I was like, well, not much, really, because I've got to do this, got to do that, got to do that. And he went, no, no, when you're sat in your car, yeah, you can't write anything, you can't plan anything, you can't do any of the other stuff that mm. you know you need to do at the moment, but you don't have time to. Yeah. Whereas if you do this by train, I've just gained you 10 hours sat at a desk where you could be on a computer or your you know, your iPad doing the other bits that are going to help you with the week afterwards. And I was like, ah, oh, you git. <laughs> right. And we tried it that way. And the cost was a bit more. But even silly things like the train took me right into next to where the hotel was that I was staying at. Mm. And it then saved me money on the 48 hours of parking I would have had as well. Yeah. He started looking at it and going, it all starts to weigh up a bit. And yeah. the amount of time I had to write, I'm not, I can't even say exactly what I was writing because there was MDAs involved, but it meant that I got another project done while I was traveling. I couldn't have done that if I was driving the car. Yeah. It's great, isn't it? I tried um working on a train up to London the other day. I got really travel sick. I was like so annoyed because I was like, I've got this hour to work and I got travel sick. <laughs> so I had to really just like sit there and close my eyes. <laughs> oh no. That's totally so unfair. I don't get travel sick at all. It winds my wife up something chronic. <laughs> I, I can get away with doing it. Okay, right. I like that. So you touched on something that I want to ask you about is the people who don't even have time to explain what they do to get somebody else in to cover what they can't do. Yeah. I fully understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how I would put somebody else in place in the business to help out. Yeah. So it's the processes is how, how you do it. And you need to create those processes in yeah. order for it to understand, like to, to know that it's being done how you want it to be done. The way that I, so the things I suggest to people, and it is kind of different because Every every person, every client I speak to who's in that situation where they're like, I just can't stop. They all have there's different things that like click with different people. So some people I say, right, just send me a voice note of everything that's on your mind. Right. <laughs> everything that's on your mind, whether it's something you need to do or something you can hand over, because even if it is something you need to do, there might be elements of it you can hand over. And then what I do is I listen to that and then I think about how we can help them. And I put together a bit of a plan and I think about which VA I have that would suit that. Other people, I suggest like we have a, a, a 30 minute brainstorming call where they do kind of the same thing. They just sort of not brainstorming. So brain dumping, I call it. They just brain dump on me. Uh, <laughs> and nice. then, um, yeah. And then what else do we do? Um, but yeah, then the main, the main thing, like I say, is if I can get them to just give me some time um to stop and to just have a zoom session this deep dive we can get some processes in place um and and that's great that works really well and that's a really good way of starting that relationship with the va um however if they can't then they can grow with the va <clears throat> excuse me so um they can just start working with the va i'd suggest like a weekly call where they do exactly that where they just like you know tell that tell that VA whatever is on their mind and that VA can go oh I think I can help with this or that and um, some of our clients actually have like a word document and they just write in this word document throughout the week and the VA like looks at it and goes right I can take that I can take that I can take that um so yeah that that's a slower way to do it because you're kind of learning together as you go whereas if you get the processes in place like 
this is a, a task that happens a lot. This is how we do it. Then it's a lot quicker. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. every business owner is different. And um, yeah, it just, it's it's always different. <laughs> you, right. You are spot on again because uh, a while back uh, I had other tools set up and I was, if I start researching travel and hotels and where yeah. to stay and how to do it, I can lose days. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it just winds me up something chronic. But then we had um, somebody who was a guest on the show ages ago, a guy called Dave Doolin, who's an expert in travel, and he's really good at it. And I pinged him a message and said, Dave, if I needed to do this, this, and this on these dates, what would you do? And he went, I'll come back to you in a minute. And he went out and sorted out the whole itinerary, came back to me and went, that's the full price. Do you want me to invoice you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please, cause Get it done. <laughs> that's better than anything I saw at a better yeah. price. And he's like, it's my job. So I kind of now use him as my travel That's VA. Great. Love that. Love that. But yeah, we do that as well for clients where we put together itineraries and stuff. And it's great. Like one of a couple of my VAs actually absolutely love that. <laughs> they just love finding <laughs> travel um, what's the word? Hacks. <laughs> how, to make just, it quicker, how to make it cheaper. <laughs> there was one time when my loving wife laughed at me because I nearly launched the laptop across the room because I was trying to sort out hotels in London. Mm. And I just couldn't. You look at all of these different sites that promise the best thing in the world, and it's like, yeah. you're not telling me what I need to know. Mm. And then, yeah, turned to Dave and I went, Dave, these are the priorities. This is my budget. And he went, yep, got it. Love it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be coming to you next year going, this is what I need done, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think at some point somebody is going to have to take over my diary and my emails. Mm. Um, maybe even answering my phone because, yeah, with the best one in the world, I've been told by some very good people that I am too easily accessible, and I lose a lot of my time because I'm doing things that shouldn't really be my concentration. Things, yes, I'm doing things because I have trouble saying no to people. Yeah. Um, and and maybe I need somebody in there going, that's a yes for Paul. Paul's allowed to do that one. He can mm -hmm. have fun. That's a no for Paul. Somebody else can deal with that and do just as good a job. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I might, I might need to have a chat with you about how to cover my backside in the working world. Yeah, do it. I mean, I offer a free 30-minute call for anyone, you know, who wants to chat about. Just Hold there. on. So you've got a free 30-minute call to help out anyone. You've yeah. got your ebook that anyone can download and get loads of help from. And you've got all the blogs that people can go and read and get ideas from. Yeah. You give well, a little. Gents, we're done. That's it. We're, we're give a little, get a little, you know? <laughs> yeah, this is your half hour advert for my freelance admin. Go, go use them. Um, <laughs> that, that's all, actually, in all honesty, I think that is perfect. That is That is where I want people to stop thinking and go and see what you can do. Great. Yeah. So on that, Rachel, I'm going to ask you a question. What's your one nugget that you wish everyone that listens to this would walk away with today? Okay. I've already banged on about this already, and I talk about it all the time, but processes are the foundations for your business. I feel so bad. <laughs> processes give you that foundation so you can then grow your business. Um, yeah, I'm talking from an admin perspective, but you could branch it out I guess but um yeah having those processes in place knowing what your boundaries are so actually one thing comes before processes is boundaries so like what you were just talking about what do you do what don't you do then yeah. you build out your processes and uh yeah that's what you need I'm just going to leave it as short as that you need it <laughs> I love that I love that so much right Rachel thank you so much for being here i've absolutely loved having a chat with you i have a funny feeling that me and you could talk for hours on yeah audience. i was like when you started ending it i was like i don't want this to end <laughs> i'm having don't fun. you worry don't you worry <laughs> if it's if it's all right with you you will be coming back thank you i would love to <laughs> awesome right ladies and gents we are now going to take a quick break and then we're going to the bit where me and jesse talk about rachel behind her back and she doesn't get to hear what we said until she listens to the show uh -oh. we'll see you in a bit but rachel do you want to say goodbye to everyone yes goodbye <laughs> Newton's nuggets. welcome back everyone see i told you she had a great story now uh, i didn't know rachel very well okay and i did have a look into her business 
do go and have a look at her website and nick the free ebook. I'm pretty sure Jesse's going to put links to it to make it easy for you. Um, but there's loads of great ideas in there. Even if you don't think you can afford a VA yet, it's worth nicking some of the ideas so that hopefully you can grow your business and then maybe you will get it to the point when you can afford someone. Um, Jesse, it's an interesting would... point that actually the affording someone yeah because i think a lot of oh people... are you going to give me a lesson yes <laughs> uh, do i have to sit here and pretend i don't know that you're telling me off mm, i mean i don't really care yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> my my thought here is that almost everybody who has a small business passion project or otherwise generally we we get into this not because we're what i would class as a pure entrepreneur you know we're not we're not coming in this going i want to make a business i want to make like a sum of money there's many many zeros and all of that what we're doing is trying to make a living out of something that we love doing and the reality is the thing that makes us the money is the time spent on doing those things yeah whether you're an artist, a cake maker, a professional speaker, whatever it is that you're doing. I don't I don't earn money by writing the invoice. No. And so all of those things, whilst they look like a cost, the reality is that if you've got someone good doing it efficiently for you, then you can wipe that time out of your schedule. And you need to think about how many hours it would take you. So not how long it takes them, but how long it would take you in your your time. And how much you charge that out to customers. And realise how much money actually you should be making. And we talk about this in the Patreon. Uh, Rachel gives, gives a really interesting, specific case study about this. But it's just something I... So um, go go join our patron and, and you can go and join it for a month or two and just go and watch yeah, it. Join it to five yeah. join it for one month and leave. Um, but yeah, I definitely go and listen to that case study that she has about um, somebody who, who realized how much money they had lost from not being essentially available to do all the admin side of the business. Cause they were so busy do They were busy doing both, but because they couldn't juggle all of it, um yeah and this is just lost income okay yeah this isn't considering what you were saying a minute ago about how much of your time is wasted and what's the value of your wasted time doing all the stuff you shouldn't be doing um and i, I remember that example it was something like 126 grand wasn't it yeah that's a lot of money i don't care what business you're in that's a lot of money to lose because you've missed inquiries yeah God, if I was missing that much, I'd be able to afford a car. <laughs> if I was missing that much, I'd be able to afford an assistant. <laughs> That's kind of the point we're making here, Paul. <laughs> so, Jesse, are you trying to teach me the lesson of if I got somebody in to do all the stuff that I don't like doing, I might be able to do more gigs that I love doing and more talks and we can charge people for those? Uh, yeah, exactly. Good lesson. Yeah, in... In that respect, essentially, you're it. You re, it works out that actually it's not a cost. Yeah. You know your electricity is a cost because you kind of need that, but it's not helping you specifically sell something. But actually, this this is literally going right. I'm giving you an extra day of your day a week of your time or however much it is, and imagine it was the, it was how much example, more you can do in the day. It was the example that I gave about the travel stuff that I do quite a bit of now. If a company is booking me and they want to sort out all the travel, great, I'm fine with that. They can do that. Therefore, I don't need to add it to the invoice. They can deal with it. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Just give them the ticket to tell me where to be. Um, but then on the flip side, I have a lot of times where I have to sort out the travel stuff. And Jesse, you've seen what I'm like when I'm trying to go through comparison sites all over the place and going, well, this one's good because of this, but it's not so good because of this, and this one's great because I can do that, but this one doesn't have a car park and I need to park my car. And this I one... love it because I will every now and again <sighs> randomly give you a call 
And I can tell that you and Mrs. Pauly are both at a certain level of stress, and I know exactly what you've just been doing. <laughs> Is this the clean show or the X-rated show? Uh, huh? You just said we're at a certain level. Don't worry. Don't worry. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're moving on. Moving so on. now we've sold to you the idea of a VA. <laughs> and what you want so to true. do, what you uh, want to do, is find out how to choose a VA, and you can do that by joining our Patreon. Here you can. Join <laughs> our I Patreon. literally asked that question. And actually, the Patreon thing paid for something important for us today. Yeah, it did. No, it I've actually got, did. It yeah. really did. It was, it, we used it in a business sense. I'm so proud of us. Yeah, it actually helped the show. <coughs> so yeah, my... money you spend on Patreon gets reinvest reinvested into the show. So, and on on the right, okay. My my last thing there was the travel stuff. Seriously, I could waste days on that and still get nowhere. But then I hand it to people who know what they're doing. It's done really quickly and at a better price than I can find. I love it. Yeah. I love it. But let them do it. Let somebody else do it. They're better than me. Um, right. What else do we have to do today, Jesse? We need to. Oh. Nuggeteer of the week. Nuggeteer of the week. And I've even remembered we need a jingle. It's time for the Nuggeteer of the week. Nice. Today's Nuggeteer of the week goes out to our buddy, Mr. Chris Bond. Now, this is not just because sometimes you join us to whack balls down a driveway, okay? it's A not driveway? A... Yeah, driveway. What? Do you mean a driving range? No, I'm, I'm pretending we're multi-millionaires. We've got massive driveways. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine that film where he hits it and it just bounces down the road miles. Just keeps going. <laughs> oh, what was that? Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore, that's it. That's it. Um, yeah, it's, it's not just because you come out of us and mess about every so often, Mr. Chris. It's because we have noticed that on every social media platform you have, you will promote some of the stuff that we do and we're at and we're doing and the silliness we're up to. Now, we are talking about sometimes you do it on Twitch, sometimes you do it on Facebook, sometimes you do it on Twitter. Just wanted to say thank you so much, mate, and there are a couple more badges coming your way. You're an absolute gent. Uh, does that cover all, Jesse? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, sensible stuff, sensible should I do the, the horrible announcement now? Yes. Right. I'm going to go sensible just for a second because I really don't want to be doing this one, to be honest with you. Um, over a year ago now, a friend of ours came onto the show and gave a great talk. We had a great interview, and it was all about his fight with cancer, and it was about how everyone should check themselves and take it seriously because if you check yourself and if you can – be ahead of this absolute rubbish that's that's pretty much a plague on us at the moment, okay? Please check yourself for any form of cancer and be careful. Um, so Guy came on, did the show. It was episode 74. We've had some amazing feedback on that show. We've had some horrendous feedback on that show. I know at least five people who checked themselves because of that show, found something and got sorted. I'll be blatantly honest with you, doing a show that has saved any kind of lives is amazing to me. Yeah. Um, the fact that Guy came on when he knew what he was going through, he knew that this was going to take his life, and and that happened last week. We've lost a great friend to our show, a great friend to, to me personally, been absolutely ripped to pieces by this, but I just want to send out all of my love to his friends, his family, um, you know where I am, guys. If you need me, if you need a poorly hug, just say so. I'm there. Mm -hmm. um, Guy, I won't get to say it to you again, but thank you so much for everything you did. From me, from Jesse, from everyone you've helped, including the people that we will never know about who hopefully listen to the show and when I'm going to get this checked out. Yeah. Um, um, I know that... Um... Some of, we've spoken to some of Guy's family, obviously, before we've talked about this. Um, and he was really, you know, he came on the show because he was so passionate about spreading the the message about, you know, going getting checked and his story. Um, so basically, we're just trying to encourage everybody to um, go and listen to his episode. I think it was episode seventy four. 
Um, it was just over a year ago. Um, it's, <laughs> it's just, I would say it's a weirdly, because of, it, because of his mental attitude, it's a weirdly positive um, feeling um, when he talks, um, but very powerful. Um, and if we can get as many people as possible listening to that, you know, it can save the heartache that that I know that a lot of people are going through at the minute. So, yeah. Um, for once, I don't think I can bring this back up to being funny and no. messing about poorly. Um, so, thank you, everyone. I'm off for the night. Yeah. Thanks very much. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. Now, if you want to subscribe, it should be up there. If you want to see more of Newton's Nuggets, they're down there. If you want to see more about mental theft stuff, that should be down there somewhere. And the business speaker stuff should be up there. Thank you very much. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.